Kutch, Saurashtra, parts of northern Gujarat. These are some of the driest regions in India which face drought-like situations due to scanty rainfall. For decades, people of this region were denied the basic human right of clean drinking water thanks to this woman, Medha Patkar. Medha Patkar shot to fame with her Narmada Bachao Andolan, opposing the raising of the height of the Sardar Sarovar Dam. She and a coterie of activists, NGOs, leftist intellectuals, along with a section of the media, ran a campaign against the project by instigating the poor and vulnerable people. In 2012, PM Modi, who was back then the Chief Minister of Gujarat, launched a scheme called Saurashtra Narmada Avataran Irrigation or Sauni Yojana to provide excess Narmada waters to the arid regions of Saurashtra by diverting flood waters which overflow from the Sardar Sarovar Dam. It involved raising the height of the Sardar Sarovar Dam from 121.92 meters to 138.68 meters. The project also involved a spider pipeline network spanning a distance of 1,125 kilometers and hundreds of small dams to store the water, thus bringing water supply to 737 villages of 11 districts and 31 cities in the Kutch Saurashtra region. About 4 crore people, including 10 lakh farmers, would get water for drinking and irrigation purposes from this project. The project also sought to provide electricity to Gujarat, Maharashtra, Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh through the hydropower generated. However, the project faced several hurdles because of Medha Patkar. Medha Patkar claimed that increasing the height of the dam would displace about 40,000 families as their homes would be submerged. Despite the government offering land and cash compensation, Medha Patkar peddled that rehabilitating the tribal community from the project affected area would negatively impact them on all aspects, socially, economically and culturally. She even reportedly lynched government officers who went to survey land for rehabilitation displaced by Narmada Sardar Sarovar Dam. Through her numerous agitations, Medha Patkar claimed that the water would never reach the intended beneficiaries of Kutch. The project also faced apathy from the Congress-led UPA government at the centre, which sat on it for years because the Congress government in the neighbouring states of Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra felt that they were at disadvantage. Back in 2017, former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh claimed that Narendra Modi never met him over the Sardar Sarovar Dam. The truth is that Manmohan Singh lied. There is a report of 2013 that proves that Narendra Modi as Chief Minister met Manmohan Singh the Prime Minister to discuss about Sardar Sarovar Dam and other pending projects. Even the World Bank, which had earlier agreed to fund the project, refused to give loan citing environmental concerns. But that did not stop Narendra Modi and the people of Gujarat from getting what was rightfully theirs. When the World Bank refused to fund the project, the temples of Gujarat organized funds for the dam. After Chief Minister Modi became Prime Minister Modi, the blockades in the Sardar Sarovar Dam project were cleared. In June 2014, a month after Prime Minister Modi was sworn in, the final approval came, giving a new lease of life to the project. In May 2017, Narmada waters reached the parched regions of Kutch. On September 15, 2019, the Sardar Sarovar Dam reached full reservoir levels of 138.68 meters for the first time, becoming a moment of pride for Gujaratis. And finally, on 6th July 2022, the waters of Narmada reached Modkuba, the village that marks the tail end of Kutch Branch Canal, proving Medha Patkar wrong. Because of Medha Patkar, the project got delayed by 20 years which would have quenched the thirst of crores of Gujaratis. Medha Patkar has been proved wrong in another case as well. A research project funded by the London School of Economics found that the socio-economic conditions of resettled tribals are far better off than those who chose to stay in the higher elevations of the forest near the dam. Contrary to Medha Patkar's claims, the tribals even noted that their traditions and culture remained intact even after the resettlement. Having seen the rising standards of living of their former neighbours, those who chose to stay in the forests now want to move out of the jungles and improve their socio-economic conditions. 
but Medha Patkar does seem to have gained significantly in this entire episode. She has been accused of laundering money during her Narmada Bachao Andolan days. Within a year of formation of the Narmada Navnirman Abhiyan in 2004, the NGO had received around Rs 1.2 crore and managed to evade law enforcement agencies for over 17 years. According to a report, the NGO received the funds from 20 different sources in a single day on June 18, 2005. Interestingly, the amount of all 20 donations was the same. which was rupees 5 lakh 96294 one of the donators was also a minor when the funds were transferred based on this the enforcement directorate in april 2022 filed an fir against medha patkar over money laundering charges probe into patkar's shady dealings have also been initiated by the department of revenue intelligence and the income tax department Medha Patkar has also been accused of embezzling more than rupees 13 crores on the pretext of funding educational opportunities for tribal children. It is this Medha Patkar who the AAP had fielded as its candidate in the 2014 Lok Sabha elections and is now planning to project her as the chief ministerial face of AAP in Gujarat. But the people of Gujarat will never forgive Medha Patkar. And just like how Odia people sent her running When she came to meet her aide opposing the JSW steel project, the people of Gujarat will give a befitting response. If at all, she harbors aspirations to be their leader.